<gasps> what, what do you got over there, uh, Perangelo? A, a way to finally defeat the Shredder? Well, it's more of the last line of this haiku I was writing. Oh, oh, great. You ready? Shell of a defense. When combat heats up, withdraw. Turn up the AC. Cowpunk. It's Tortles on WebDM. We're giving three-day badges to PAX Unplugged to five lucky winners. This is one of our favorite conventions because it's all tabletop gaming all the time. It'll be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on December 6th through the 9th, and we're going to be there. Here's a chance for a badge on us. Link to enter in the comments and descriptions. Wax poetic about turtles. Sure. Since they are poets at heart, after yeah, all. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The fact that they love haikus and write haikus is probably my favorite thing about them. I, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it is a personal passion of mine. The turtle gets, like, at least I have seen and read, some very weird um, love-hate sure. with the design of the turtle. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, one of the biggest things probably is the fact that they only live 50 years, which, I'm sorry, I do call bullshit. Yeah, when well you go looking for stuff, like, what's people's opinions on the turtle? What do they think? What kind of characters are they making? Only live 50 years? <laughs> WTF! It's just, like, page after page after page of only 50 years. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, I agree. Yeah, they should probably live longer. Um, at the very least, uh, as old as dwarves uh, or something. But yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like, how much does that really affect your campaign? Yeah, um, you're running a 50-year multi-generational uh, campaign. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know many people that do. You, you know. have to you have to put up with like the turtle like <laughs> nanny or the turtle babysitter that passes away. Yeah, and that's that's just part of the. She's got to deal with it, man. You just got to deal know? with it. Yeah, it's mortality. Yeah. <laughs> it's tortality. It's tortality. Anyway, but the turtle, the anthropomorphic turtle. Sure. Turtle. Turtle Whatever. person, sure. Uh, I mean, th they show up in the Turtle package, which is this supplement to Tomb of Annihilation, although mm -hmm. they've been in the game for, for a while, right? Since at least, uh, I think, um, one of the X modules, uh, X9, uh, is what I think it is. Like a lot of anthropomorphic uh, animals in D&D, &D, someone will think about them once <laughs> and write them up, yeah. and then they just sort of like stay there as opposed to, uh, you know, the way dwarves, or especially elves, they have this dynamism in the way they're portrayed and everything. In terms of like their lore and their their background and ways that you can integrate them, it, it's pretty much limited at the moment to the turtle package, uh, which just describes them uh, on, on their snout of Ugmar, or whatever it's called, uh, uh, near Chult. So it really just covers like this one small group of them mm -hmm. in the Forgotten Realms, or at least I take that to be one small group of them. So you have a, a lot of conceptual space to play with. Yeah. Right, they don't have a lot of things that are already nailed down about them. You, no one's going to be like, you can't do that. That's not what turtles do. The way you might would say, like, portray elves or, or dwarves or something. They do have this fertile ground. But, like, I don't know. What do you think of their baseline lore as described in that turtle package? Of them being, like, sort of friendly nomads? Yeah, I mean, they're very individual. They're just, like, moving around, you know, uh, spreading spreading their love and their cheer or whatever. It's kind of the way they're normally, like, turtles are portrayed. You know, just very... Serene. Serene. Just solitary. Calm. The last time I went to Comic-Con, about five, six years ago, yeah. uh, went to the San Diego Zoo. Uh -huh. They had some Galapagos turtles there. Uh -huh. And I was just like, oh my God, I want to go pet one of these bastards. Yeah. Somebody leaves the enclosure, and I walk up, and this little guy had was getting pet, and he turned his head down to eat a leaf. And I was a little sad because I didn't want to mess with him. You know, I didn't want to, yeah, yeah. in, in, you know, just get up on him. But I just kind of sat there and just kind of was like, hey there, guy. And I just kind of said hey to him and had my hand out. And he's like eating this leaf. And then he turns his head up. And like we make eye contact. I shit you not, Jim. I forgot about the world. Mm. And he like literally extended his hand up to my hand and mm. just kind of closed his eyes as he met my hand and I just mm. gave him a little pet. And sure. it was one of those moments where you forget you have a phone and you want oh, to sure, capture sure. this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, it was a moment in time and I'll never forget it as like the universe came to a complete standstill. And I gave this little guy a, a perfect little pet on his head and then he went back to doing his thing and it was just sure. like, all right, I get it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so there, the secret of the universe. Sure, yeah, there's a serenity <laughs> to uh, to them. So, I, you know, I, I can see how you could build on that baseline lore of, of a, uh, a people, a group, you know, someone in your world that's, 
you know, they lead solitary lives just by their own, you know, you know, they just do, right? They're nomads. They come together in these, like, big groupings of, of total kind, I guess, where they exchange news and information and have, like, a swap meet, I guess. And then they go on their way. They, they don't have permanent settlements or anything like that. And so you can see how you can just sort of maybe insert them into different parts of your campaign worlds where it's like there's an enclave of tortles over here or or it's like yeah you know 100 years ago a couple of them showed up and now there's a big family and others of their kind of coming gone and we've just sort of gotten to know these um <laughs> friendly genteel survivalists who just want to like create beautiful things and mm -hmm. be a valued part of the communities that they're a part of and like they don't mind adopting other people's deities or cultural practices so they're kind of like a, a real blank canvas uh, in that way you can do a lot of things with them and i think you could have a place for these anthropomorphic animals uh, and a, a turtle just is a good fit because they are so they don't have a lot of baggage uh, with mm -hmm. them, unlike, say, like lizard folk or, or tabaxi even. You could uh, take the turtles and make them something really unique and special. Maybe they are, like, incredibly long-lived, <laughs> you know, like, m more so than elves, you know? Well, I mean, I, you know, if you look at the comparison of tortoises <laughs> now versus, say, humans, right. like, you know, that one fucker just turned 150. Right. You know, like, yeah, he's still going, <laughs> you know, he just... He loves his watermelon and cheese. He gets it every birthday. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, why not? They're, they're survivalists uh, in every regard, except against time itself. They, maybe because they're reptiles, they've got this different mindset about things, mm -hmm. and, and 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 so maybe they are seen as someone who's like wise, or or their counsel is valued, not just because they're experienced, but because like they just have a different perspective on life and and what you should do and what your mm -hmm. priorities should be. And so in these cosmopolitan sort of like D and D cities and, and, and countries and the like, where there's a lot of different uh, interminglings of the different people of a fantasy world, they could like replace elves or supplement elves or be included alongside say elves and dwarves as like the elder statesmen, mm -hmm. the level headed, uh, you know, extremely long lived level head uh, round back. There you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> or maybe they're like the natural soldiers or something and you you they're turtle in name only and they're really more just sort of like shelled lizard folk who mm -hmm. are the mainstay of the armies of the reptiloid republic. <laughs> Those, uh... Oh yeah, you would definitely have a squad of shell shock troops. Yeah, easily, on, yeah. You right gotta there. have that, right? <laughs> and so it's like the turtles and the lizard folk and the yonti and, and maybe they invite the grung and bullywugs and the like, uh, extend their hand to the uh, amphibians. Uh -huh. But it's, it's like... All you know, it's, it's all out war against the mammals. It's the mammals! <laughs> 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 they have flaunted their hairy hides and sweat yeah. glands for far too long. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, or it's even like, you know, maybe the guy make an alliance with the avians. You know, it's like, we remember you of old. Our alliance from when the time of the dinosaurs. <laughs> you know, and uh, that's kind of... <laughs> Y'all once branched off from us. Uh -huh. They're just mad that all those uh, reptilian mammals, the Gorgonids, uh, left uh, the evolutionary stream that long ago. So they're just yeah. sore about that still. Mm -hmm. Anyway. And they have long memories. They have so long memories. <laughs> but it could be like that if you have a, a you know, like the turtles are, say, uh, you know, the eternal enemies of something like the Aboleth, right? The Aboleth are, are supposed to be these horrific monsters who have... Uh, you know, extremely long-lived memories, if not perfect memory, from the instant of their people's creation to the current. They've got mm -hmm. grudges against gods and 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 all kinds of pettiness that gets uh, metastasized into D and D world-saving plots. Like, what if your turtles are there? They're the one, they're the only ones that can live long enough to keep track of these existential threats, mm -hmm. right? Like part of the cycles of these D and D worlds is like, oh, they all forgot, you know. Like if we wait long enough, they're all going to die. Yeah, we'll forget about it. We'll come back, and like maybe the turtles are responsible for keeping a record of those things, and like yeah, you know, I'm just imagining forget. like a, a turtle library now that just consists of shells on the wall with their stories oh, yeah, of the, yeah. the wielder of that shell. Yeah. You know, at, at his passing, they, they transcribe his memoirs onto his shell and yep. it just goes up into the collection so you can, anybody can look what, at any of what them. What an archive. <laughs> it's a giant shell. <laughs> huge. Huge. Yes. But, it's, but that's like, say, a, a good way to uh, sort of keep that tradition going. Maybe it's like a, a thing where the, the turtles, uh, you know, Carve something in their own shells as they're as they are uh, uh, you know, adventuring or something. I, I like that they are 
sort of presented as, listen, they, there are people that love adventure, you know? <laughs> like mm -hmm. they just do, they like new experiences, they like new things. And you can kind of translate that into your concepts of, of them being active and involved in the world. Um, I, f I find that like too many of these D&D races they they're they're recluses they they want to stay away and i don't blame them right the dnd worlds that they live in are horrific places but <laughs> you know they're like in their secluded mountain valleys or underneath the earth in their halls or or something and and it's sometimes refreshing to just see one that's like nope they go out in the world they're not afraid of it they mm -hmm. they understand that this is a a fantastic and wonderful place and you know they've got to learn how to survive in it like i want to play a turtle that's just uh the completely naive like kind of bumpkin Oh, yeah. Like super, like playing it right along yeah, with yeah. the uh, with the lore. They're very helpful. They just love adventure, but like they literally have no concept of how awful the world really is. Oh sure, yeah. And just see how long that 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 kind of plucky optimism carries them. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I can certainly see that. I can I can see you taking it in the in like an opposite kind of direction, and and maybe a turtle who's a bit older and long lived, and who's kind of grown cynical and and detached. And you can see them being like maybe a mastermind uh, mm -hmm. or something where it's like, yeah, they they have learned how to manipulate these other peoples a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're necessarily malicious. It's just, you know, life moves at a crazy pace when you're around these other people. And sometimes you just have to keep things shuffled in the right order and mm -hmm. pull the right strings so that things don't get too hasty. Yeah. <laughs> I like the intersection of... of Turtles and, and turtle folk and like mythological turtles, mm -hmm. right? So I'm thinking of things like Zaratan is is a you know this mythological turtle island that uh, that that's in like uh, Mordenkainen's guide and, and of course it's been in other versions of D and D and I start to think like how can I combine that with my turtle? You know, is Zaratan a warlock in, or a warlock patron in some way that my turtle warlock can commune with or? Mm -hmm. Or is it like, can I make a turtle that sort of recalls, reminds you of, or captures the essence of a Zartan? Like, can they be massive? You know, yeah. how big can I get this turtle? You know, can they be, can things grow on them? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I have a druid and I want uh, their, their uh, you know, their shell to be home to a minor ecosystem or something. And it's in the, the ridges and divots and everything in it uh, are, are, are been cultivated carefully with all kinds of lichens and mosses and same as the the, the version in like Avatar: The Last Airbender. The oh sure, yeah. The dragon yeah. Tur turtles mm. that have you know full force on their back, and then you when you go in Legend of Korra mm -hmm. and actually see the history of the Avatar, you can see where they had whole civilizations. Oh yeah, yeah. like uh, 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 Omashu. Uh huh. Imagine that on a turtle's back, and that's what it was in the beginning. Oh nice. And when they went out into the Feywild. Uh huh. That's the the turtles were the ones that gifted man with fire or oh air yeah yeah or yeah whatever. yeah, yeah like, I get you. so it's very warlock in that regard they were literally oh, yeah. I'm gonna give you this power so you can go out into the fey realm and and hunt and, and keep keep all the fairies away from you but when yeah. you come back I'm gonna need that fire back sure yeah um, yeah yeah I, if the bigger ones you know these giant creatures are uh, you know there in the beginning they're helping the mortal races you know awaken their inner power or their magic then maybe like the turtles are not angels but sort of their servants or like mm -hmm. the, you know they're created or 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 you know somehow given form in those early days and now the turtles are there to sort of guide things along and keep everything sort of going in the same direction in the spirit of the old uh, dragon turtles yeah that's pretty cool uh there's there's a a, a a sort of a floating turtle island in land between two rivers um out in the kaleidoscopic ocean that, that basically has the last remaining turtles in the world and they for them it's like uh you know it's a contemplative life on this island uh, they, you know, they, they mostly just practice their slow magic and, uh, you know, and, and not really much else. And they don't really know that there's been an apocalypse. Well, they do. They just, it's more like, this isn't the first time. This won't be the last. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, for them, they take such a long view of history uh, and, and such a long view of, of the state of things and the cycles of history that they're not so much concerned with the day-to-day -day or even century-to-century -century calamities. Uh, that occur, uh, they're there for other higher purposes. But that's just one group, you know, there could mm -hmm. very well be mutant, uh, you know, turtle berserkers a la uh, Toka from uh, <laughs> Ninja Turtles, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Uh, with some others, um, 
Dragon Sorcerer, uh, Tortle, easily be Bowser. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, definitely how you do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously, Uwe is yeah is a monk. I mean, monk, he's, right. he, you know, whichever one you want. I, I would say he's Tranquility. Easily, yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what would you what would you call Franklin? <laughs> <laughs> He's a zero level common. Uh, easily, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I, I honestly, from what I remember from the book and uh, watching the cartoon show with my son now, uh, it'd be probably a bard. Yeah, yeah, like a budding bard. You know, someone who's like, oh, you know, wants to keep other people, uh, not make them happy, but you know, certainly make their days better mm-hmm. and explore the world. Certainly. All right. Let's... Children's cartoons are fertile ground for D and D adventures, folks. Well, anyway, that, that, that they are. <laughs> uh, they're... They're there to inspire curiosity and adventure. I mean, that's all it is. Gamera is, even though they are kind of a turtle, they are a lot more of a kaiju turtle. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know where the rocket legs come from. But, I don't know, uh, but <laughs> if you think of something that... This is where I start going weird places, because it's like, can I make a warforged turtle, cyborg turtle? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, you, you, you mean like from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah, yeah. Let's get to what everybody wants. All right, what are we talking is, about? Which is, let's, let's go ahead and just class out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Right okay, quick. all right, okay. Because right. they're obviously turtles. They're obviously... But, Obviously, turtles, but they're not necessarily all ninjas. What do you have as Leonardo? The the tendency might be to say battle master, mm-hmm. and and I can see it kind of, but I would I could also see purple dragon knight, and I could also see one of the uh, you know despite the lack of spell casting in the show, like something like a bard type, or if yeah. you were going with like a non magic variant, then maybe like one of the wardens from Adventures in Middle Earth, mm-hmm. you know, where they're like they're encouraging, they're a leader. Um, certainly, if I was going battle master, I would take inspiring leader as a you know as a feat to yeah, kind of yeah. represent that. I'd probably go purple dragon knight, mm-hmm. just because that's more of the support type fighter that I that I see him as. He's definitely a fighter, I, I think. And and you know, the, to me, the ninja part is their background. You know, it's yeah. like a custom spy uh, kind of background. But yeah, yeah that's yeah. where I see Leo. Yeah, I put him in either battle master. I could also see him kind of as a kinsai monk. Okay, uh, sure, yeah, just definitely. Like really focused on his swords, yeah. um, and that's really it. Well, I guess if, maybe of all of them, he fits kind of the monk archetype maybe the best. Yeah. Uh, and so you can, you can sort of see that. So one of the two would uh, mm-hmm. be good. For Michelangelo, Ooh. to me, yeah, he uses his nunchucks, but he's very freewheeling. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He's very carefree. Yeah. So I would put him as either just like a champion fighter. Okay. Yeah. You know, he's just really, he just, you know, he just crack you upside the head and just crit you a lot. Right, right, right. There's nothing uh, fancy about it. Just uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a I little fancy. A little bit more acrobatic. Yeah, he's got some acrobatics. Um, yeah. Either that, or he is like a, an open hand monk. Not drunken uh, master. I mean, like despite the not yeah. drinking in the cartoon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, drunken master could work. Um, if that's how you, you know, if you want to flavor it that way, his he gets, he gets zeal, drunk off of pizza. Yeah, he gets drunk off pizza, and it's more of his zeal and, and free willingness. <laughs> I, I think I, to me, drunken master, a reflavored drunken master works best for Mike because of that freewheeling, just sort of like zany, goofy kind of uh, manner. There's the you know, if you're going by sort of the cartoon and the, and the later movies, there's a lot of slapstick. Kind of whenever Mike's on screen or doing something, so uh, that, I would probably go Drunken Master. But if I was doing more like the comic books, then I, I think definitely Open Hand. Uh, for mm-hmm. I, I think that that he fits that uh, concept pretty well. Raphael, Whew. I yeah, you know, it's hard not to go Berserker. Yeah, I'm, that's literally the only word I've written. It's just he's a Berserker. <laughs> it's a berserker. He gets angry. Yeah, uh, and he, starts, it's, he starts effing stuff up. It's primarily that um, you know, if there was some other way to model that kind of fury. Uh, it, with you know through something other than Berserker, uh, I I would feel more comfortable with it. Yeah, because uh, certainly is not like it doesn't fit the archetype of the big weapon wielding sort of bruiser. But I think it's more like when I think of Raph, I think of I think he's probably the toughest mm-hmm. of the of the four, and and certainly just the more the most. I don't, I'm stubborn, you know, I'm going to do it my way, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and you guys can go <laughs> take a hike otherwise. And so those things fit my concept for like a certain type of barbarian. I think it just fits well. Berserker, yeah. you know? Oh, totally. I'm right there with you. Yeah. And I mean, we can both say Donatello on three, one, two, three. Artificer. Artificer. Yeah. yeah. Artificer. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, pr- it's pretty fucking perfect, right? It, it really, <laughs> it, it really is. And if I was going to do like a full party, then that gives you... 
you know, artificer, barbarian, and either two monks or a fighter and a monk. You know, one of the one of the way you've got either two fighters, two monks, or a combination of them. Yeah. And so you've got uh, you know a, a group of very like martial focused characters supported by someone who's making a lot of like you know patching them up after a fight and uh, all that. Uh, so. Yeah, I think that's good. You know, occasionally they bring on another fighter named Casey Jones, mm -hmm. and occasionally they bring around uh, you know a rogue uh, investigative reporter, and uh, of course they've got a sensei rat folk who uh, you know what he does tranquility maybe I don't know what Splinter. I mean, he could be tranquility or just straight open hand. Just straight more another open hand. Yeah, so yeah. this is a good adventuring party. Fun, fun adventure. Right? Could good setup for like an urban campaign. Which is like, yeah, you guys are like outlaws or mutants. You know, you can't show your faces topside because people would just like freak out mm -hmm. uh, around you and so you've got to like sneak around at night but there's this like secret war with criminal elements in the city and how they're connected to the the legit operations of it and mm -hmm. you've got to like it's sort of like a reverse dungeon crawl because if you're the ones hiding in the sewers then there might be tons where it's like okay guys we got tipped like they're coming after us we've got to go like intercept them before they get to our home base we got to set some traps set some traps or something so yeah you're protecting your dungeon yeah and now mm -hmm. when you go up top side you're the city which is normally a safe place and you don't really worry too much about it when you're adventuring in it now that's the dungeon and you've got to worry about patrols of watchmen and, and and mm -hmm. other kinds of things. I know, we, that was a long d d tangent on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but... Well, I mean, I hopefully. think the, the cultural <laughs> touchstone, is, it, it merits is. it. It, it really is. It. Because when you think about when people... When you go looking and, and sort of seeing, like, what are people playing for Turtle? It's like Monk, Barbarian. You know, it, it seems like uh, that, that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are, are a big inspiration for people when playing it. Let's run through the actual abilities. Sure. Because uh, we've kind of touched on a couple of them. Uh, as far as stats, plus two to strength, plus one wisdom. I mean, that's a strength monk all the way. It's a strength monk, yeah, uh, it's great. Yeah, especially since you don't need to you don't need to worry about AC. Certainly. Uh, the fact that you get claws, one d four slashing, one mm -hmm. uh, d four plus strength uh, slashing is mm -hmm. you know, hey, you got a weapon there, you're always armed. Yeah. Um, holding your breath for an hour. For an hour is a it's. A, a, I like that because, you know, there's a couple of races that they, they can hold their breath indefinitely or don't need to breathe. Sure. Uh, but, I don't know, just the fact of you can hold it for an hour. Yeah. That's, that's some fun ro uh, RP uh, situations, you know, where you're trying to hide and uh -huh, maybe you uh -huh. got to jump in the sewers. And sure, yeah. Sit there and just watch Swim and away. Wait. Being able to operate underwater of your own accord is sort of one of those benchmarks I see for uh, RPG characters, especially D&D, &D, where exploration and adventure often go hand in hand. And so like having a, a, the option of just like, yeah, I, I get an hour. I'm assuming that it doesn't take them that long to reset that hour. You know, uh, a couple I, of breaths. I would assume, yeah, a round's worth of breathing <laughs> is enough to, to, to reset that. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think maybe lizard folk are the only other uh, only other option that gets like a set limit for their amphibiousness or their mm -hmm. whole breath, but I could be misremembering. Mm -hmm. um, what about that natural armor? I mean, I mean this that... is this is the thing that I think you know it makes the natural AC of seventeen. You know, you're not supposed to use any armor with it. You can still use shields. Still use a shield, sure. Uh, but this is the thing. It's like really like any class can benefit. I mean, will benefit from this. I mean, having a higher AC no matter what. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, some classes, they have their own ways to calculate AC, but still, a set 17, that's pr usually normally higher than you're going to get with a barbarian or a monk. Certainly, yeah. Usually. It, it, usually, yeah. So it's like, if you're thinking about it, an AC 17 is what equivalent to splint mail. You know, that's uh, like the one right underneath uh, plate mail, and it's... Or a breastplate with, with two decks. Sure, there's that as well. It, you know, there's a lot of a lot of ways where 17... 17's better than bark skin for druids, mm -hmm. right? So if you're thinking about playing a druid, and you're worried about, like, how am I, you know, not going to get <laughs> smeared in melee or something, then uh, maybe Tortle is something to look at and pick up a shield uh, for when you're not wild-shaped so that you've got a nice... As someone who has had a druid who died <laughs> because they just got hit too much, uh, having a lot of AC is going to be good for them. Uh, same with, like, wizard, right? Mm -hmm. Like, wizards are often, um, you know, have low ACs. That's why Bladesinger is so popular uh, with wizard players uh, who, who are worried about their defense. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you could go Abjurer, you could go... Gosh, you go War Mage uh, with a Tortle, and, and uh, you know, now you have a, a non-spell reaction shield, basically, and could probably have a really fun time. Mostly, I, I think of... 
of, of builds that would benefit from not having to either not having to worry about decks for their AC or not having to worry about their AC period. Yeah. And so barbarians pop up on that because now they just have two stats they need to raise instead of uh, three. Although it should be noted with uh, both monks and barbarians and turtles, you pick one way of calculating your AC or the other. So you either pick the static AC of 17 or the, you know, in the case of monks, dex plus wisdom plus 10 or mm -hmm. barbarians, dex and con. I, as I understand it, that is a, um, not a permanent decision that you can kind of always negotiate that. So if you are playing, say, a monk turtle or a turtle monk, you might start out by relying on your shell AC because it's going to be higher than the combo of your dex and, and wisdom. But once you get both of them, you know, once you get one of them to 18 and another one to 16, you're now looking at the same as yeah. <laughs> as uh, the shell. And then, you know, if you get both of them at, uh, at 18, it's now better than the shell. So I, that's how I would approach it. It's how I've played my Barbarians, mm -hmm. where sometimes I'm wearing armor, sometimes I'm not, depending on what my decks and con are. Same thing with Tortle. The only thing I would add, would sort of like get clarification on are the sort of the edge cases. You know, does shield count as armor for the purposes of defensive fighting style? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, I was going to ask about the, fi the fighting style because it does say when you wear armor, you get a plus one. Right, right. Because um, I would think like to me, the, what I'm thinking of is like, oh, plus one AC. That brings my AC to 18 without a shield for a total fighter or any of the other warriors that mm -hmm. get access to that. That seems pretty sweet. And I also, it's static, so you don't have to remember to use it. Um, yeah, yeah. But if you've got a DM who's been real stickler for the rules, then the fact that it says you have to be wearing armor, you, you might they might say, well, you're not wearing armor, but my personal argument as both a DM and a player would be, I have natural armor and also, come on. <laughs> you know, like I just, it, this seems like one of those instances where you can... Yeah, hand wave that. You wear natural armor. Certainly. It's your skin. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, I, yeah, that, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I would be the same way. I'm sorry. If you're going to nitpick over a fucking <laughs> one AC when you're, you know, they're they're ignoring the other things that they could be picking. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Weapon they're, fighting. They're uh, using fighting. a big ass mm -hmm. uh, hammer or whatever. But no, it's like yeah. they just want a little extra AC. Fine. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'd look at that. If, if, if you are playing a turtle fighter or ranger or something and that is causing you trouble, then consider taking Mariner. Uh, that's also a way to get in a little extra armor as mm -hmm. well as a swim speed. So... Uh, yeah. yeah, therefore you can swim underwater and hold cool. your breath. Yeah, uh, so um, go two weapon fighting and, and take that other feat for oh, another no. plus one. Certainly, AC. certainly. So that's your natural AC, and then of course they have another armor yes. class boost, which is the shell defense uh, action to withdraw within your shell. Mm -hmm. You get a plus four to AC. You get a lot with this. Yes, but you also lose a lot. Right. Um, advantage in uh, strength and con saves. You are prone mm -hmm. with a zero to speed, and that can't be increased until you pop out. Sure. Uh, you have disadvantage on deck saves, no bonus a or uh, no reactions, mm. and it's a bonus action to reemerge. Yeah, which actually I do like that it's a bonus action to reemerge uh, versus an action to withdraw. Oh sure, sure, sure. So yeah, you I mean, can kind of like pop out. at the moment you can pop out, move, and right. attack. You know, right. you can actually ambush yes. as opposed to wasting your action popping out. Oh sure, yeah, you yeah. Know? Like all those monsters with action teleports uh, yeah. in, the, in the monster mail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now you go. Use my action. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. Um, <laughs> I look at this one and I go. The fact that it's prone is that, that to me that's the big drawback. And I look, I look at it and I go, okay, this is kind of a cool ability. You, you sort of like turtle, literally turtle up for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, there it's probably pretty circumstantial when you, uh, you know, when you would uh, use this. But the fact that you're like prone, which means anyone in melee is going to have advantage to hit you, which kind of not cancels out the plus four necessarily, mm -hmm. but it's like usually you factor plus five for advantage, so right, right. the bonus is uh, canceling that out. So I think, honestly, I would change this and just say, or, or add one more thing, which is just you have uh, resistance uh, uh, to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Like you have barbarian resistance while you're in there. And that sort of both represents the fact that your shell makes you harder to hurt, uh, which is the AC. And then just it's dense and tough, and you're you know you've kind of turtled up. If you felt like that that was too much, then I might remove the AC bonus and just give them the resistance, yeah, or or something, or maybe even outright immunity to non magic. You know, as they like are literally closed up in their shell, drawn in. I don't know. You know. Yeah, I mean, I see this more as a defense against ranged artillery, range barrages. Oh well, certainly. Then in that you're, case, prone, you're, they're you're closing. Yeah. 
You're not there yet. You see them knocking arrows, and then, yes. all right, I'm not going to get there. Well, I move towards them, and as my action, I turtle up. Yeah. Arrows grain in, bonus action pop out, move, continue to move closer. Yeah. Because they're getting disadvantaged. You have the AC bonuses and everything. Um, I don't know. I mean, to me, it's one of those things of, I mean, it's a, it, it is a last-ditch defense. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you're just hoping that that plus four gives you enough. Certainly, certainly, uh, yeah. Which, and against ranged, yeah, you, that's, I mean, now they'd have disadvantage plus your plus four. Mm -hmm. That's, this is a great range defense. Plus, you know, they don't have advantage on uh, deck saves, so if they, like, target you with, you know, like a fireball or something, that's going to get you, but... On almost every other kind of ranged attack. Well, I mean, you would just be a turtle in its shell, just cooking. Just so, cooking. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then the last thing uh, for their whole uh, survival instinct is, of course, survival the proficiency. Survival, yeah, yeah. Um, which, again, does not include time. Um, mm, 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 mm. And I don't know. I mean, I, I have a couple of character ideas that I want to play with this eventually. I know? use them for crab people in, uh, yeah. in Lamb Between Two Rivers, the aquatic adventures. we got someone mm -hmm. who's playing sort of like a... A crab folk person and turtle makes a good sub for that reskin for sub. They've got claws, yeah. they've got a shell, and that kind of thing. Give them water breathing, you know. Yeah. It's all good. I was going to say, there are a couple of ways you could alter maybe the claws uh, for uh, different versions of turtles, tortoises. You know, give them swim no, speed with the speed. flaps yep. instead of the claws. Yep, or, yep, yep. Uh, like you were mentioning, uh, snapping turtles. Snapping turtles are like with a bite attack. With a bite attack instead yeah. of the claws. You can you do know. that. Because, yeah, there are no... Oh, there are no subclasses, even though there are many different turtles, right. tortoises, tortoises, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I, I do that. Like the other, the only other things that I think of that I would add are are, are sort of um, the mythical turtle type. So maybe uh, a, a way that you could recreate, say, a, a kappa, a kappa. I forget what they're called. The Japanese sort of like turtle uh, mm -hmm. spirit, uh, water spirit, like a, a dragon turtle, turtle, mm -hmm. right? Someone uh, on Twitter mentioned it to me. Show me their um, their homebrew that they'd made on. D&D Beyond it was like well, that's really cool. Like it's somebody had taken this the idea of a dragon turtle, ported it over using Dragonborn and Tortle, and I was like, that's really kind of cool. Like this is a interesting and unique sort of way of presenting the class and mm -hmm. recalling sort of the monstrous, uh, you know, creatures that are uh, you know present in D&D. &D. And it was like spot on. There you go. Yeah, I would probably leave the claws, take away the hour breathing, take away the shell defense, and give them the breath weapon. Yeah, and the, and the resistance. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. give them fire resistance That'd and the breath fun. weapon. Yeah. But still natural armor, sorry. <laughs> you're, a dragon, you're a dragon turtle. You have scales upon scales. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, fun times. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. WebDM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the Web Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, we've got games on Twitch every week, and they're archived on our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's bossa nova. Whoa, whoa, what do you got over there, uh, Perangelo? Oh, um, uh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, uh, shit. Oh, yeah. Sorry, my, my, my things were falling apart. <laughs> it's fine. Figured it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right.